five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. I'm Dear Myrtle, your friend in genealogy, and welcome to Genealogy Game Night, where we're going to play Who's in My Line. Cousin Russ, I'm so glad you thought of that particular thing. Tell us how we play the game. We've already got some players on the panel and others may choose to join us as the evening goes on. Sure. Uh, first of all, you think of a an ancestor or someone in your tree that you've done research on and think of a clue. Just one clue. And then we have uh, ten, time, 10 guesses with negative answers to guess who that person is or something that's important about that person. We don't necessarily need the name. We don't need the name, but just something about uh, we need to identify that. Their uh, job, their... Whatever. If they were in a battle. And I have a, I have a score sheet that uh, is... Uh, you, I count down from zero to ten and the, you keep guessing as long as you get a yes answer mm -hmm. but if you get a no answer then the next person will guess and you got ten times ten guesses to do that so okay so we get ten uh, meaning we missed we messed up and got a no yep. but we could have 432 yes answers and keep going is that you right bet. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So, folks, we've got a few people over in the community. Feel welcome to try to stump the panelists and see if you can get there first um, and and identify the characteristics of this ancestor. Now, who uh, I am to... I am watching the community, so I will mm -hmm. see your comments and bring them in as we usually do. Okay. Sounds like a plan, and I'm ready to go. Um, who wants to share their ancestor first to find so we can figure out who's in your line? Uh, Carmen, you're with us. Betty Lou's with us tonight. Betty Lou, you're having really good bandwidth tonight, so I'm excited to see you here. It's all good. Carmen, you want to go first and sure. give us at least a clue, one clue. And Betty Lou and Russ and I'll try to figure out who's who. So it can be any, as long as it's just one word. Uh, no, you can one say, clue. You just one clue. So it could be a, a um, sentence or not an entire paragraph. I know how you like to go on. <laughs> <laughs> At least in your writing blah, you do. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, I um, love it. I love it. I'm kidding. I know I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Um, yes. This ancestor was a pioneer. Okay. So, Betty Lou, you get to... Um, start asking questions first. Hopefully that narrows it down a whole lot. <laughs> Were they a pioneer in the United States? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you get to keep going, Betty Lou. <laughs> Good. I'm making notes because if when it gets to my turn, I don't want to ask the same silly questions. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Was it? Did they live in the mid 1800s? A little before. Okay, so she gave you a clue. Mm -hmm. So actually, that answer was no. It's a little before, isn't that right, Russ? Yep. Okay. Did, did, but did her lifespan cover that time period? Well, then the answer would be yes. Yes. Well, that's why I asked the question. Okay. Okay. So clarification, please, Carmen. When you said, when Betty Lou said, did mm -hmm. this person live in the mid 1800s? Did they live through 1850? No. Okay. okay there so we there's. Go. All right. Does that help? Okay. All right. Now I have to come up with something brilliant. I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> Was this a pioneer of traveling? To settle an area? Yes. Okay, because that lets out some kind of industrial revolution or, mm -hmm. or which we weren't having in the early 1800s. <laughs> so, okay, uh, so it was a settlement. Um, did this person receive property 
um, that had been designated, uh, oh, using a bounty land warrant. Ooh. I'm not sure because. That's a good answer. I, 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 I mean, I, I know the answer, I think, but I don't. Um... Okay, well, we can talk about it once we figure it out. Okay, 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 because I'm not sure what to say, but I, I, I think so. I'll just put it that way. Okay, because, well, actually. We'll take that it, as a yes. Okay, because actually the person could have purchased the bounty land warrant from somebody who received it for military service oh, no, 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 but no, no, didn't no. want to go out west. They only wanted, you know, the person that uh -huh. actually earned the warrant sold it to somebody like a land speculator or uh -huh. perhaps an ancestor and then that person settled because maybe the the old soldier was too elderly to travel out to the wild wild west right that's, right. that's the context for which I meant that oh, it w but it wasn't for military service though oh so I'm not sure if it was bounty I mean I I, I have that was the document that I have I was going to show hopefully at the <gasps> end Ooh, so it could have been a fed. Uh, what this person could have received property. Did that? Was that a yes, Russ, or not? Was that a yes so far? I'm making it so complicated. I'm making it so complicated. <laughs> well, there were cash sales from the federal government to individuals. Mm -hmm. um, the earliest on mine it was in the 18 early 1830s. So, mm -hmm. did they? Uh, would you find their land entry or their land? Patent at the Bureau of Land Management website? No, no. Okay, there's a no. Uh, Russ, are you playing or are you just keeping that? I know. <laughs> I don't think it's there. But I, okay. <laughs> well, let's try to get a uh, geographic location. Okay. Uh, that, was, I think that will help once I guess say who the. the okay. What's the location west of the Mississippi? No. Ah. Um, that was a knowing ah. Uh. <laughs> However, <laughs> Betty Lou, that didn't help me. Did it help you? I mean, there's so much east of the Mississippi. All right, west of the Mississippi, IPPI, making notes. Go ahead, Russ. No, it was. she said no. It was not west of the Mississippi. Oh, so it's a no. Oh, so Betty Lou, we're turning it to you, dear. So it's east. Western land south of the Mason-Dixon line. Or the no. Oh, so. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Russ is like, oh, I know this one. <laughs> no, no. That's four down, six to go. Okay, so it goes to me. Yep. So was this uh, in the Ohio? Uh, in the in Ohio? No. Okay, Russ. You're muted, dear. And it's uh, not. It's north of the Mason-Dixon line, which and, I'm drawing all the way out to the Mississippi. And it's not Ohio. How about West Virginia? No. Um, okay, and I and I have a point of information on that that Mr. Mert and I were just talking about the Civil War. And if it was before the Civil War, there wasn't, there was no West Virginia, so it would have been Virginia. Virginia, right? It's um, not Virginia either. Okay. <laughs> so, so you so were right, Russ. You were fine. <laughs> you were right. The, He's always he, right, guys. He's I, always I, right. I, yeah. I remember that. I got to pay attention. Okay, Betty Lou. Lou. Was the state they were in border, or did the state they were in border one of the Great Lakes? Yes. Okay. We have a we have a question from the community since we got a yes, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It is Pennsylvania. So thank you, Cindy. So we're talking about PA. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So Betty Lou, you got the yes and and a little help. Then who was that that gave the help? Sunday Bray. 
Oh, Cindy, thank you. And we've got a bunch of viewers over in the community. Do jump in because, as you can tell, Betty Lou and I and Russ need a little help identifying um, Carmen's ancestors. So, Betty Lou, you know it's now Pennsylvania, and you, you had a yes, so you get to go is again. It in, is it in eastern Pennsylvania? Yes. I had to think of my geography there for a minute. <laughs> I was like, um, go yeah, again. Okay, Betty Lou gets to Betty go Lou, again. you're on a roll. Yeah, you are. The only thing is, is all my knowledge is for Western Philadelphia. <laughs> <sighs> Were they born before 1800? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boy, she's really getting all the yes answers here. Good. Keep on going. On a roll. <sighs> Did they come from another country? This particular ancestor come from another country, or was he born in the North American continent? Well, that wouldn't narrow it down, would it? You have to say in the colonies. They the, that person, as far as we know, was born here. Okay, so that was now, a no. The parents may have probably did come, but the, the person was born here. That, that you know. Okay. That was a no. Just oh, trying great. to clarify everything here. <laughs> All right. Um, did this person have... Um, are we trying to identify this person's um, occupation? Is that what's distinctive? Like, for instance, a while back we had somebody whose ancestor was a bricklayer in Philadelphia. And that's what we wanted to find. That was the distinguishing characteristic besides the name. No, no, no. So the occupation isn't a big deal. Mm -mm. Just a regular guy. Or gal. Could have been a gal. Okay, that was a no. How many more chances do we have, Russ? We have we have three to go. Terry says maybe it was my captain Jacob Gearhart who has a memorial Ooh. in Pennsylvania. Cool. <laughs> Is what Terry says. And that would make you, Terry and Carmen cousins if that mm -hmm. were true. Yeah. Uh, you're shaking your head yes. It's Carmen? not him, no, no. Oh, okay, all right. You got it. I, I just liked your your point about being cousins. I was like, oh, oh that would be that would be cool. <laughs> yes, yes. It is amazing how in our small group of twenty five hundred to five thousand genealogists that we know how many of us are cousins, especially I, since I don't have New England roots, you know. So, what were you going to say, Carmen? Could I should, should I give another clue? Maybe that'll help. Yeah, definitely give us clues. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. We got a question from the community. Okay. Was this person in the Revolutionary War? No, no, no. Was not. So, so uh, we're seven down, three to go. Should I give another quick uh, clue that might. Sure. That, um, this ancestor has to do with the Native Americans. Oh, okay. If that try puts it in a different. Mm hmm. Okay, Betty Lou. I have a question. Mm hmm. Was this? Did this person was part of this person's fan club? Um, related to a a religious sect. Mm, not that I know. No, no. Not that okay. I know of. Okay. And Russ, I think I'd know if she is related to Conrad Weiser. Well, that why was <laughs> that was one of because he did translating for the natives. Yeah. 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 So, oh. Wait a minute, I have, oh. I have a, okay. I have a I have a comment from the community. Cool. Uh, was he a captain of one of Washington's boats? Uh, supposedly, according to the story. No. No. Won't count that. No. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, we just count panelists know. They yeah. they gave us a hard time, Betty Lou, but it's your turn, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Ask the obvious. Did he marry an Indian princess? No, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I close, have a... close, but no. Okay. Well, I don't want to say close, but was this Order. ancestor of yours the Indian princess? Was no, it, no. I, no, I mean, was it the native? Was this person native? No, American? no, 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 no. no. Uh, okay, not native. Okay. Okay. Well, you stumped this panel. So tell us who's in your my line. Um, her name is Rebecca Walters. She's my sixth great grandmother. Mhm. Mm and she in um. She was captured by Indians oh. and held for about 13 years. We have the documentation, um, and then she was released. And the document that I had, and I hopefully I'm going to try. Should I go ahead and try a screen sure. share? Hopefully yeah, this is going to work. I hope so. If yes. Not, okay. It probably I'll, will. Here it is. Okay. This document is. The, Did you hit the screen share? There yep, you go. She's working yeah. on it. Yep. I can it, tell. The it was the, the the land grant they have was by the proprietaries of Pennsylvania, and her her father's name was Casper Walter, and it was in 1735. Whoa! So I I wasn't sure what to, I wasn't sure how to answer that que your question about did they have a bounty? I was so I was like, well, I'm not sure how to answer that, but anyway. Yeah. There we go. Uh, where was the property uh, that where she was um, um, abducted? Was that along the Schuylkill? Where was it? Do you know? Lancaster County. Okay. And so, when was Lancaster County and, created? And they, Long. according to, and this man was her dad, and her dad was killed. Oh, in like, was he killed at the point when she's getting abducted? He, well, well, well the, the, the way it goes is the kids were, were out playing. Oh. And they no. came, the, the natives came, and then he went to grab his gun. Because yeah. I guess that's what you did then. But yeah. see, according to, it, it wasn't that the Indians were being mean on purpose. Of course they weren't. But the French, I think, was trying to get them to, to not like the settlers just to get back at the British. Yeah, they were a little bit of instigators back so and forth. So I think so. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So uh, yeah. Was that yeah. in the French Creek area? The, the, there's an area of I think it's Lancaster County that's either French Creek or. It's the. Uh, I'll put it in the. I'll put it. I'll put it in the the, the chat box because I'm not really sure how to spell it. But it, it's the the Cono uh, C O N O C H E A G U E settlement. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Sorry. I, mean, I don't see it in the chat, but was it, is that Concha yeah. Uh Yeah, it sounds like yeah. it. Sounds like it. Yeah. Wow. Cool. I can't wow. even spell it. Excellent. But it, it, it's, yeah. Anyway. So then, so she survived captivity. Mm -hmm. And then what happened when she came back into captivity? Uh, after being captive for 13 years, she came back... Um, mm -hmm into white man's world. Did she mm -hmm. adjust well? Did she marry somebody or what happened? She did. She married, um, but and, but her brother, she had an older uh, brother. I guess I think he was younger. I'm not sure, but she had a brother, John, mm -hmm. and John couldn't handle being back with the, the white men, so he mm -hmm. went back to the Indians. Mm -hmm. he... Wow. What a thing. You know, and it's, it's really hard because the Documents that support our understanding of these yeah. historical things are skimpy at best. And so a lot of it are the stories that have been handed down. Now, the document you had, what? tell us more about that document. I could see it, but I couldn't really read it because there's a lot of cryptic writing. What oh, was the totally. document about? It was a, a land patent that her father had gotten in 1735 from the proprietaries of Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. All right, so he did receive land. Her father received her land. Her dad did. Mm -hmm. And, um, hmm, very interessante. But it was a state land patent. Yeah, not, well, it wasn't a state the Proprietary yet. patent, yeah, the, from the... Yeah. From the William Penn, the proprietor. 
very what, interesting. Does it? It, it would have. Did it, it came from William Penn, right? Oh uh, no, it was after William Penn. After, it, okay. Yeah, okay. it's um. Okay. I'm not sure of the. Yeah, he that's was cool. Sixteen. He was yeah. He was a little bit mm -hmm. earlier than that. Mm -hmm. Cool. What a wow. story. Wow. And one one quick thing I want to say was, she was supposed to have been killed. They because you know, but what saved her was an Indian mom, liked her eyes. She had the, apparently the deepest darkest eyes. The, anyway, the Indian mother loved her eyes, and that's why they didn't kill her. And I was like, whoa, because if they would have killed her, I probably wouldn't be here. Mm mm. And this, boy, it's we it's yeah freaky. I mean not freaky, but yeah yeah surreal. It's a very surreal. Very tender story, and I can only imagine the difficulty trying to reassimilate. And the, and I can relate, and and somewhat understand how the brother just couldn't get back mm -hmm. into that. He couldn't um, into white men society after having lived with the natives and hunted with the other, you know, boys his age and had grown to maturity and things like that. But I would wow. love to learn more about him. Boy, that's I yeah I would. If you have one of those ancestors you want to talk to. Mm -hmm. It would be John. John Wald. I want to want to find out what happens. Five five minutes with him. <laughs> I could be, yeah. So you get to say your ancestress's name and then say who's in my line. So her name is Rebecca Regina Walters. Who's in my line? You get to who's say that. Who's in my line? That's perfect. Thank you for playing News in My Line. You stumped us all. Sorry was... about that. I, I maybe I should have started with the Indian thing first. No, 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 no. It was no, perfect no. because what we we're doing. Did you see how we were like working out history? And oh yeah, William Penn was earlier, and so this was from the that proprietary mm -hmm. government, the provincial government, the colonial government of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had to figure out things like that, and that was a different kind of land transaction than a bounty land um, transaction. I like this. It's, it's, it's making us think on all levels, because that's what we do as genealogists. Yes. When we get, so I like it, yeah. yeah. Genealogy so, game night. Uh -huh. getting, my, getting my genealogy juices a-flowing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, Betty Lou, do you want to do the next one? How about you go ahead and do it? Oh, great. I'd love to. Okay, so I've got to go find an ancestor to talk with you all about. Um, let me see. Am I in the right, right folder so that I can find this document? Um, okay, I'm going to tell you um, about my ancestor. And, um, hmm. Which one will I tell you about? Okay, it's a guy. That's what I'm telling you so far. So, Betty Lou, you want to go first? Did he live in the 1800s? Yes. She gets to go again, and she's thinking... Did he live during the time of the Civil War? Yes. Did he serve in the Civil War? Yes. Did he go to Utah? No. No, he did not. So, Carmen, do you want to see if you can identify anything else about my ancestor? Did he die during the Civil War? No. Okay. Russ? Was he at the Battle of Gettysburg? No. That's why I picked this guy, because I knew you'd guess too early into the game. All right. Um, would you like me to... Uh, back to Betty Lou. Yes, okay. Betty Lou. Where are, we, are we trying to de determine his occupation or where he lived or what? Well, 
I don't know. Well, he didn't. Well, let me share this clue with you. Okay. All right. Can you all see that picture? Mm -hmm. Let me share it with everybody in the community. Okay. That's the soldier. And that's perhaps the biggest clue I can give you about what's unusual about him. Okay, is the soldier the man sitting down? Yes. That's a yes. And let me pull up my Does page. it have to do with how old he was when he died? Uh, no, but his age had something to do with the um, unusual thing pictured in the photo in that photograph. So you were partially right. I think it's a yes. It wasn't when he died. It's something about his age, though. Let's look at that photo again, everybody. Now I know why you want to go to Missouri soon. Uh huh. Yeah, Parkerville. I'll go there, not to worry. Did it have to do with his age when his son was born? Yes, you could say that. Um, and I think that I'm going to have to tell you what it is. We, we got seven more guesses to go. Okay. Well, this is... Um... No clues. No okay, clues. all right, yeah. all right. All right, I'll just give her a yes. I'm, you're saying I'm too easy on these people, Russ? Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. Was he in his 50s when his son was born? Uh, let me see. I had to do the math. No. He was not in his 50s when, the man, when, that, when his son was born. Uh, Carmen? Was he older than 50 when his son was born? Yes. Was it... Did, was he an older parent than we would expect to have a child? Yes. I think we got it. Would you believe that in this photograph, this is William Gist Froman, that is his oldest son, Lowell, and we're really glad that we are descended through him. Uh, he was born um, when his father was a little more than 60 years old, just not quite 61. And that is not his daughter, that is his wife. And this was not uncommon after the Civil War, was it? Do you know why? <laughs> you got a comment from the community there, Russ. Yeah, Cindy says, <laughs> was he one of the oldest people to survive? Uh, to, to serve, serve. I'm sorry. To no, serve. that would be that guy in Gettysburg, I think, that was the oldest guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that had served in the... Was it the Rev War or the 1812? I don't know. He was a little kid at the time of that war. No, well, uh, I was going to say, if they were about 20 or so when about the time the Civil War started, they wouldn't start their family until after the war. Well, he didn't yeah, actually that's... marry his wife until 1897. This is his second wife. Yeah, I was going to say, he was probably second wife. Mm -hmm. He's divorced from his first wife. And I actually know a lot about him and know firsthand from this son's youngest sister that this is her dad and her mother and her older brother. Um, do you know why a lot of these gals married these really old mm -hmm. fellows? Pension. pension. The pension, yes. And in some cases, they started out as um, nursemaids to them. And oh, yeah. 
Um, but then, it, you know, there wasn't a, uh, there weren't a lot of guys. Do you know how many men died in the Civil War? And they were a lot. Uh, what was the age difference between the two of them? Well, she said that she was 13 years old when she married him. No, she. The best I can calculate is that she was about 15 years <laughs> old uh, when she married him, and that was. Three, let's see, how many years before the kid was born? Um, okay, 1899. They got married in 1897. So she had him when she was 17. In this, she's in her mid, um, her early 20s. And um, I would have never, ever guessed this. If it weren't for the two youngest sisters, the one who shared it with me, who was in a nursing home, and her sister, who had got, who had since, who passed away first, who had gone through the old photographs and labeled them, and then um, she was able to share this photo with me. So it was two of the men, I mean, two of the the youngest sisters who knew this to be their mother. And their father and their oldest brother. Wow. Um, uh, you have a comment from the community. Yeah, Linda says a shortage of men, mm -hmm. which is what you said. I have another comment that I'll bring in. Sure. F from Lisa, my left ear is listening to the game. <laughs> my eyes are glued to the gets to the Giants Nats game, which is tied <sighs> one one at the bottom of the eleventh. Nothing like dragging it out. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Whoa, that is a long game. My gosh, the the um, interesting thing about this woman, um, and I have a, a number of other photos, is that um, she was his widow. He died in an old soldier's home at Leavenworth, Kansas, and I've been there and I've been to his grave. But she's the um, uh, Louisa May Higgins, who, when he was in the old soldier's home at Fort Leavenworth, she's living in town or in, an, in a uh, town close by with another man. And there were a series of three men, and this came out in her widow's pension application. Where even, I mean, I could understand the soldier sister saying, oh, my, that dirty woman, she, you know, lived with somebody else while my brother was dying. He was, a lot of the Civil War soldiers had problems self-medicating. It was post-traumatic stress syndrome, and they didn't know what to do with that disorder. And... Um, and so he was in and out of that um, old soldier's home, and I don't know if it was a matter of survival or what, but he, um, this boy was out of her home by the time the father had passed away and the mother was making application for widow's pension. She received it for the middle children, but not the two youngest, and not my ancestor, Lowell Simpson Froman, the boy pictured here. Um, the two younger ones, paternity was in question. And, of course, Lowell had already, um, um, you know, aged left. Out. Yeah, he'd aged out. That's the way you put it. Thanks for helping me on that, Carmen. Okay. All righty. So that's I think my that must answer. have been Betty Luke. I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, aged out is Betty Luke. That's exactly what it was. I like that, yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's my William Gis Froman, who uh, in his second marriage um, married a much, much younger girl. Wow. Yep. Okay. All right, so. I have uh, one. Okay, Russ, tell us about one. your ancestor. We need a clue. The clue is storekeeper. Okay, who wants to take that one on first? <laughs> How about you, Carmen? We're going to throw you to the wolves here and see what you can come up with. Storekeeper. Was this person a man or a woman? Well, Yes, one or the other. <laughs> he can only say yes or no. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, was this person a woman? No. Okay, you had a 50-50 chance. Ergo. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. So, Betty Lou, do you want to go it. next? Is he famous for the type of store he had? Not in my mind. The answer is no. Oh, great, guys. Send it over to me. We really need help from the community. Uh, and folks, those of you who are just tuning in, this is Genealogy Game Night. We're playing Who's in My Line. We're trying to figure out who's in Cousin Russ's line. Um, okay. Um, did this person... Um, um, hmm, a lot of your ancestors are in Pennsylvania, so I'm going to take a stab at it. Pens did he live in Pennsylvania? Did not live in Pennsylvania. Okay, no Pennsylvania. Not that that would help. Okay, Carmen, your turn. Did he keep a general store? Nope, he was just a storekeeper. Hmm. Do you think Did we can ask a point of information? What's the difference between a general store like owner and a storekeeper in your mind, Russ? One that owned versus worked in. Oh, so he worked in it. Okay. Okay, we got it. Okay, Betty Lou, I think that's your turn next. <laughs> Did he live in the 1800s? Yes. You're getting all the yeses tonight. That's good. You go, girl. <laughs> Did he serve in the Civil War? Yes. Hmm. Was he a... A storekeeper for the military. No, he was not. Okay, and I think five that, down, five to go. So I think that is uh, is called a isn't that called a settler? The ones that kind of they weren't exactly right entrenched or embedded with the units, but they're kind of back from it and they could move with the units. But it's not that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. has a question, and the, her question is, was he a keeper of arms? The answer is no. Oh, hi, Lisa. No keeper of arms. Okay. okay um, hmm. wonder why Cousin Russ would have given us the clue storekeeper as the main entryway for our to start thinking for us to start thinking about his ancestor um, I I'm drawing a blank on this I can't think of anything uh, did it have anything to do with well arms would include the ammunition wouldn't it not just and yeah um was it medical supplies? Nope. Okay. So who's next? Is that Carmen? Carmen, yep. yeah. Did he fight for the Union? Seven down, three to go. Okay, we couldn't hear. So that must have been a no, huh? It was not in the union. Seven okay. down, three to go. Betty Lou? Was he in the Confederacy? Yes. Hmm. Keep going, Betty Lou, because I don't have a hope or a prayer. <laughs> And I'm your backup batter, and this is serious. <laughs> Linda, Linda has a comment. Was he working in a store involved in a gold or other material uh, 
Right. The answer is no. Does it have to do with who came into the store? Uh, Rush, you're muted. The answer is no. He's, he was just a storekeeper, but okay. that's not why. That's not important. Well, it is important, but. <laughs> oh, great. He gave us a red herring to begin with. <laughs> <girls>. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's hard. He's hard. He does. Hard. He really Tough puts the crowd in the paces here. Oh. Tough crowd. Okay, so um Um did he rise above the rank of private? Russ can't hear you. Did not? So it's a no, Carmen. He's not a private. Oh, he stayed a private. If he was a private, are musicians privates? If he was a musician, I don't know the answer to that. We need to know from the community. Okay, Carmen. Did he live in Virginia? He did not. So I win. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here, here's a picture of David Ridgely Howard, Howard and his brother. Now, he was a storekeeper. Uh, he was in the uh, census from 1900s to 1927 when he died as a storekeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was wounded twice in the Civil War, once at the Battle of Gettysburg and once down in Virginia. And he lost his leg, and that was the important piece hint that I didn't want to give. But he lost his leg, but uh, in the at the second battle when he was wounded the second time, and he lived in Baltimore as a storekeeper. So, cousin Russ, this um, gentleman, we saw where Ridgely Howard came up onto Culp's Hill, and in fact, we thought that he was in battle opposite my ancestor from the Indiana, um, from the Iron Brigade, Indiana 19th. But we found out Culp's Hill has more than one point or peak and yep. that my fellow's um, unit was to the north and out of the line of battle. But your that was a very difficult battle at Culp's Hill. I'm surprised. Yeah. So his wound in his leg occurred at the second battle, that, so yes. that would have been not the Gettysburg battle. That is correct. He, he was wounded at Gettysburg at that battle, mm -hmm. uh, but he, I've, I've been able to track where he was in the hospital, and he mm -hmm. wasn't with his unit, and when he returned to his unit, uh, and then he was wounded a second time down in the Shenandoah Valley, um, and uh, but he he went back to Baltimore and he stayed and he and his family uh, stayed together and there was actually two uh, there was about there was at least two brothers in the same battle uh, on Culp's Hill and mm -hmm. uh, there was probably I believe there was four Howard's cousins or siblings mm -hmm. in in Gettysburg in the in the battle not necessarily the same place I haven't done the research on the other people but mm -hmm. there was at least four of them in the battle and when I visited Gettysburg earlier uh, the interpreter who was leading our tour around actually knew the family name and knew the story and uh, that picture came from a book that his cousin wrote uh, uh, McHenry Howard, mm -hmm. uh, f like Fort McHenry, and mm -hmm. that's where it was his middle name, but he got his name from the fort uh, through the family, and uh, so there was a, a lot of information that I was able to find about the family, and the reason why he's important to me because I spent a summer trying to find out who this guy was. Who the heck? Uh, yeah. He was in introduced to me as Ridgely Howard, which is two surnames for me, mm -hmm. uh, but I had to use inferential genealogy and a good um, 
the <laughs> good thing that we did the MGP study group to help or a French with genealogy that um, uh, helped me actually find who this guy was. Well, so. and we need to work really hard, Cousin Russ, on our Howard lines for me to figure out because I descend from Cornelius Howard and Ann Dorsey. Um, Cornelius died in Anne Arundel in, in 1680 and I daughter her out at Joshua Howard's daughter Violetta, Violetta Howard who married William Gist and uh, then we start getting into the gifts of the Revolutionary War and then the son of that, the next son, uh, I think we go down, yes, William Gist, the grandson, uh, is the gentleman uh, that I referred to earlier as to who's in my line. So, yeah. yeah okay. I, I, have a, I do have a comment from the community which I'll bring <laughs> in from Linda who said, this was unguessable. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I had been I, thinking of Ridgely Howard, I would have been able to do it, but I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I love it when we get feedback from folks over in the community. And I try to make a post every week to let you know that we're doing game night, both in Facebook and over here on uh, Google Plus in the, in the Dear Myrtle genealogy community. Um, okay, Betty Lou, are you ready for us to guess about one of your ancestors? Okay. He was a government official. Okay. Russ, I'm going to let you go first. Government official. Um, in the 20th century. No. Okay, let me write that down. Not 20th. Okay. Uh, Carmen, you're next. She's thinking, I can see the wheels turning and her and stomach you, grinding. <laughs> yeah, she needs to unmute herself. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. Did he live in the 19th century? No. Ooh. Okay, so did he live in the 18th century? No. Oh, wow. Okay, Russ. 17th century? <laughs> 17th century is the 1600s, yes. Yes. Um, why don't they make it, why did they make it like that? I don't know. But anyway, you're right. It, you so have to do the math. He was in the colonies mm -hmm. um, south of the Mason-Dixon line. No. Okay. So, who's next? I forgot. Would that be me? Yeah, yes, it's you. Thank yep. you for helping. Yep. I was hoping Carmen could bail me out. <laughs> okay, so um, was he um, uh, in one of the, oh, well, you did say he was a government official, so I can't say was he in a provincial government or colonial government. I have to figure out what type. Russ, did you say north or south of the Mason-Dixon line? I said south, and I was wrong. Okay, so thank you. Some north. Okay, so was he um, uh, in the New England area? No. Okay, Carmen, your turn, dear. Um, I have to take notes. I just can't keep track of this. Uh, did he live near Philadelphia? Not in the area she would think. Um, he did, but he wasn't Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Okay. But north of the Mason Dixon line. Oh, Russ, isn't it your turn next? And I, what was the. You said Pennsylvania and New Jersey. What was. I missed the full. It's kind of near Philadelphia, but not Pennsylvania or New Jersey, is what she said. So well, that would put him. It's considering near Philadelphia because there's a lot of area there around Philadelphia. You're right. You're absolutely right. 
So Russ, he's thinking about it. It was near Philadelphia, did you say? Is that a yes or no? Yes. Oh, but okay. Yes, but not Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Well, that puts them in Delaware. Part of his career, yes. So you got a yes, Russ. Good. Keep going. <laughs> Part of his career in Delaware. So he wasn't in Maryland. In the so was it north of Philadelphia on the Delaware River? I don't know the geography I that well. The Delaware River, but yes, it was north of Philadelphia. North of Philadelphia. Does his religion have anything to do with him? No. Not important. Okay. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. Um, so, um, was he the mayor of a town? Not the mayor. Okay. Um, Carmen? I may have gone out of turn. I'm not, I don't even know which was way we're going. Was he the, um, and I'm not sure what you call them, what they called them, but was he the, um, uh, governor of, the, of a state? Or colony, or colony. Thank you. I'm not sure what they were. I forget what they were called. But did he did he lead this the colony? Yes, he was a governor. Oh. Okay, okay Russ. Oh wait, she got a yes. She got, she got a yes. She got a yes. Okay, wow. Governor. Um, I'm not sure where else I could go with that. Um, because we don't have a list of them. Uh, yes. yeah. 1600s governor was he the one of the first governors yes and I'll give you a hint it's not English not English so um, does that help the clue? Eight down, eight down, two to go. Still with Carmen. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Was he Swedish? No. That was I'm a not, good. I'm not sure where that where that one came from. But yeah, but there were Swedish along the Delaware, and so you're thinking of that, I think. But, Russ, are you next or me? You go ahead. Okay, so was he part of the um what's that country? The Netherlands group that came in? Yes, he was part of New Netherlands. Okay. And I don't know who that is. Van Rensselaer uh Van Neerswick? I mean I it's Van somebody or other. No, it's not. Oh no. <laughs> Okay. okay, you have to tell us then. <laughs> yeah, got to tell us who you're wow. who's in your line. Peter <laughs> Minuet. Okay, say it again. Peter Minuet. Oh, okay. So tell us about him. Well, he is listed as my ancestor's brother-in-law. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was governor of New New Netherlands and governor of New Sweden. Oh, how? But he is from. He is from the border between Germany and um, Netherlands. Okay. So that would be like on the Saar Valley in that area? Is that what we're thinking? I think that's a Saar Valley. I'm not sure. I'm down by Vistal. Oh. Okay. So, so where was he in Pennsylvania? It's up and no. down the Delaware. Yeah. The thing I wasn't sure how if you would consider I don't know that area real good mm -hmm. and what you meant by in the neighborhood mm -hmm. <laughs> in the area around Pennsylvania. Yeah. And and I, I think I wasn't sure 
where New, New Sweden, how far New, down New Sweden came. Yeah, and then you've got the Kingston area up in the lower part of New York. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's that's yeah, that's a real interesting area and easy to traverse because of the waterways there. So yeah, and see, he bought Manhattan Island. Aha! Uh -huh. From the natives for. From the natives. Uh, just, I wonder how close that all was. Yeah. Very interesting. So now, when it's your ancestor's brother-in-law, did he? Was this uh, Peter? Did he marry the sister of your ancestor or the brother of your ancestor? We're not sure. We're having the records we need to determine that is mm -hmm. hidden in someone's attic in the West Indies. Ah. Work. Um, because we're not sure of that. Yeah. Um, but it was Jan Hike, and they both were Jan and Peter were both um, comforters of the sick in the late 1620s in New Amsterdam. Comforters of the sick. Now, does that mean they were lay medical professionals? I mean, we didn't have Harvard uh, or I mean Johns Hopkins University then, but. I wonder what comforters yeah. of the sick. It was a term given to like a minister, um, someone from the church to go in and provide whatever needs to be done. But it, you know, that wasn't what he was known for. Are you there? Yes, yeah, so I I just yeah. had to sneeze, so I I I muted everything because I didn't know how marvelous it would go over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ed Hike was his storekeeper. Oh, okay. For the, and then when he went over to New Sweden, his nephew Henry Hike, Hendrik Hike, was his storekeeper. Okay. So we have a bunch of storekeepers. What have you got from the community, Russ? Dave said New Sweden there. was taken over by New Amsterdam in the 1650s before England took over New Amsterdam. Oh. New Sweden was the Delaware River Valley, mm -hmm. Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. So thank you, Dave, for helping us understand that area there. I, um, Dave made a comment just before that. Uh, he said, and Stan Friedberg had a great spoof on him and his colleagues. I don't know about that one, so maybe you do. I don't know. We'll have to find out. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, that's very interesting. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the thing I like about Genealogy Game Night, Cousin Russ, is that it makes it easy for us to relax, kind of brag a little bit about our ancestors, whether he's a shopkeeper or his wife was unfaithful and lived, uh, you know, and he w himself was a raving alcoholic. doesn't matter if they fought in a great battle or not. When we actually uncover an ancestor's identity, looking at a variety of compiled genealogies for clues and then documents that may mention that ancestor directly. Cousin Rush, you said you had to look at um, documents that indirectly helped you identify your, your, is it David Ridgely Howard? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you had to start beginning to do that inferential genealogy that Dr. Jones has taught us about. Um, those are big breakthrough moments and we feel like bragging about it and we should, whatever it is. Um, the first time you run across a, a land record, um, where your ancestors either buying or selling property. That was a big deal because many of our ancestors from the old country had no hope of ever um, owning property. Then there were some that came and bought 20,000 acres from William Penn himself and then sold them to their friends, uh, literally their friends, uh, in uh, Chester what became Chester County, Pennsylvania. So it's really fun to do this, get our mics working, and, and talk a little bit about um, who's in my line. What's coming up on Monday with Mondays with Mert will be interesting, folks. We spoke during Wacky Wednesday. I mean, I had to review the tape because, of course, I was out of town, and we had one of my very distant cousins come visit. I don't like to be around when the Dowager Lady Howard is here. <laughs> 
But uh, I heard that you all were attaching documents that you had found or images that could be a photographic or digital image uh, to various ancestor profiles in your programs. Um, I know Cousin Russ does it to the citation and then puts a citation to the ancestor. But Carmen here, who's on the panel with us tonight, tonight has agreed that she'll show us how to do that in Legacy Family Tree that's one of the Windows programs we didn't have time to discuss on Wacky Wednesday this past week. So on Mondays with Mert at noon Eastern New York USA time, we will be there. And, uh, and then we, our discussion on Monday will inform our decision what to discuss for Wacky Wednesday next week. And you can join us then next week for another Who's in My Line. Thank you to Betty Lou and Carmen, Cousin Russ, for keeping score. He didn't have to fudge on the score. We just flatly, I wasn't getting it tonight, was I? <laughs> Betty Lou, you got all the yes answers. Carmen, you did very well. It was a lot of fun. It anyway. Was. And it thanks was. for the hints and the, the com comments from the community. Oh. It's awesome to have a whole panel of folks helping us find out who's in my line. Totally. And thanks for Cousin Russ for bringing those comments in. I don't know how to do a Hangout on Air without having a Cousin Russ around to, to keep the ball rolling to see what people are talking about. Anyway, happy family tree climbing, everybody. That's a wrap.